All right, chemistry nerds. So our last effort, we looked at what polymerization is and how we made polyethylene. And, and during that, we went into the properties of both high density and low density polyethylene. So now we're gonna look at two or three other uh, polymers and how they're used for us. Like this is, we're gonna relate their uses back to their properties as well. So let's get into it. Basically, by the end, you want to be able to describe how specific polymers are used, not necessarily in industry, but just how they're used. And you also want to be able to describe the chemistry of, of three or so specific polymers. So we're going to start over here. We'll go down this list, down this list, and down this list. So first off, chloroethene. Now, you would have heard of this as vinyl chloride, or more likely as the name of the polymer, polyvinyl chloride. And if we have a look here, it's just chloroethene. It's two chlor uh, two carbons as an ethene with a, chlor a chlorine off the side there. Okay, so it's basically it's used in containers for wrapping film, blister packets, um, f uh, flooring. One of the most common places you would have seen it is in um, your pipes. You see pipes like water pipes. That tends to be PVC. Um, it's 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 wide wide variety of, of properties, and it's fairly cheap. It's fairly cheap. Um, it also has fire retardant properties. We'll get more into the properties in a little bit that make it so useful. Propane nitrile, or acrylonitrile, or vinyl cyanide. Called so, by the way, because, oh, this, yeah, this one here is uh, vinyl chloride. This one here is what we're talking about, propane nitrile. Um, this is cyanide. So cyanide is the C with a triple bond to a nitrogen, okay? So vinyl cyanide, the polymer is called polyacrylonitrile, okay? Or PAN for short, but polyacrylonitrile. We use it in textiles, um, dinnerware, food containers, toys. Now, you know it's stable because it's used in dinnerware, food containers. It's mixed up with our food. The second something is mixed up with our food, it's very, it has to be very stable. Um, all right, so it's sold on a, a, a number of names, including synthetic fibers. Now, the more common, one of the ones you're probably more, you, this one here you're, you're probably less familiar with, but the two you're most familiar with are chloroethane or PVC and polystyrene. So ethyl benzene, so you've got an ethyl group off a benzene, off a benzene ring, this is it here, um, is known as the, the monomer is called styrene or vinyl benzene. So it is a C6H5, that's a benzyl ring, um, with an ethene coming off the side, so an ethyl group coming off the side. This means it's an aromatic compound. And what's interesting is, oh, we'll get into that later on. So polystyrene, it's used for fruit boxes, clothes hangers, packing foam. When you see that really light packing foam, it used to be used for... Um, fast food containers, which is, we all think is actually gone, but most fast food throughout the world is still sold, including, is still sold in polystyrene boxes. It's just in what we call Western nations or developed nations, it's not so much the case anymore. There's a reason, it's really, really useful. It's durable, it keeps its shape well, it's a great insulator, so it keeps hot food hot or cold food cold, food cold. Like you can pack ice in it and keep your fruit, you know, in this box from the farm to the market. Um, it's low cost, it's very light, and it can be molded to make, sorry, to protect products, so it's really good for packaging. All right, however, PVC is easily the most important polymer, and the question is why? And very simple, the answer is records. There's no social, social distortion records without polyvinyl chloride. Um, that's probably the place where you might have seen it a little bit more than in pipes is record collections. All right, so this is our last bit here. Now this comes from the Charles Sturt University HSC website, um, HSC online. If you're not looking at that for to help bolster your summaries, then well, you should be. So we've got ethylene, we've gone through these. Okay, so low density polyethylene is low density, it's soft, that's its property. And it's used for flexible food bags, HD, is high density hard, and it's used for crinkly garbage bags. Basically, it's used for anything that you need stuff to be hard. So 
even more so than crinkly garbage bags, um, containers. Solid containers are often made out of HDPE. Vinyl chloride, or systematic name by the way, is chloroethane, or polyvinyl chloride is the polymer. It is. It can be made to be rigid, it's flame resistant, and if you add, put additives in it, it becomes water resistant. It's actually very easy to put additives in polyvinyl chloride. It's useful for pipes and gutters. Um, it can be flexible, so it can be made rigid. If it's flexible, it can be used for raincoats, shower curtains, imitation leather, all sorts of stuff like that. We've got styrene down here, and we've got ethyl benzene. So it's got an ethene group there attached to a benzene. Uh, benzene. Polystyrene is the polymer. It tends to be transparent due to few crystals, or if we add gas to it, so we puff it up, it makes a foam. So you can use it to make CDs, um, or CD cases, sorry. So that jewel casing um, that you see CDs made out of, that's polystyrene. Um, if you add heat, so it's, it's really good for heat insulation, uh, floaties, so often a flotation device, so like a, um, what are they called? A safety vest for when you're in the water. What are they called? Life vest. That should have been so hard. A life vest is often made out of, um, it will have polystyrene in the center. It's really super, super, super not dense. When you, that was weird. Yeah, anyway, we'll keep going. I'm not editing this. It's has a super low density, that's what I should have said, when you add gas to it to make a foam. All right. So those are our properties. That's what they're used for. And see you in class. Oh, no, we don't. Thermoplastic polymers. Um, basically, the HDPE, so all the ones that we've mentioned there, um, they're thermoplastics. Now, this means you can melt them down, recycle them, and remold them into new shapes. Thermoset polymers, however, they're polymers that uh, form a three-dimensional cross-linked network structure. So LDPE, that's what, so actually, if we go back there, not thermosetting. Um, sorry, not thermoplastics. Thermosets, they tend to, because they've got the long chains, all the stuff coming off the sides, they won't flow. All right, they, they've got that cross-linked, three-dimensional network structure, and it prevents them from flowing when we heat them up or put them under pressure. This means they resist melting at low temperatures. Okay, so they're very useful for high temperature work. For example, handles in your kitchen. Okay, they're often made with thermoset polymers. Uh, the very first plast the very first plastic was called Bakelite, and that is a thermoset polymer. All right, let's go.